Hello there, Christy Young here from Mrs. Young's Teaching Corner. Today I'm going to teach you how to make an end of the year class picture video using iMovie. The first step in making your end of the year picture memory video is to gather photos. Now, my first year, I realized hindsight when I was trying to put together a memory video that I did not take enough pictures. So this is something to keep in mind as you teach throughout the year to think of really key moments that you would want to remember with your class and to take pictures of those. Um, I was very blessed this year to have some helpers, volunteers, and different people who were able to take pictures of my class and I would just ask them, hey, would you mind taking some photos while you're in here? That really helped with getting some really good photos that were um, candid shots while the students were engaged in different activities that I had in the classroom. Also, I wanted to share one accidental thing that happened is when I was taking my photos, they were actually live photos. So when I went to drop them into iMovie, it looked like I had taken little video clips of the whole year and it turned out really fantastic and the parents were just so pleased because they felt like they were there in the classroom with us and just reliving those memories with us. So if you can take live photos, those work amazing in your end of the year video. Just a little tip. Now, after you've gathered your photos, you want to organize them by months or by themes. That way, you feel like you're progressing through the year. I really like to use Google Photos because when I upload them, not only does it save my live photos, but it also categorizes them by the month that I took them. So when I go back to re-download them, I know exactly when they were taken and they're organized very well. Okay, so I just wanted to show you where you can find Google Photos. If you click on the grid right here and then click on the photos and it'll take you to your Google Photos. There is an, also an app that you can download on your phone, which if you have it on your phone, you're taking pictures on your phone, you open the app and the photos will automatically download onto your drive. If you look over here, it can tell you the date of when you took the pictures. Now, I can't show the pictures of my students, um, but I would click here to find all of the pictures of my students. After you have organized your photos, you are going to need to download them onto your desktop computer. You can make an iMovie on an iPad or a laptop, however, it is easiest on a desktop, just saying. These are some pictures I took when I was explaining how I changed my iPhone into a dock camera. And I'm just gonna use these photos to explain how I would take pictures and drop them into iMovie. First, you have to download them because this is all held online and it has to be on your device in order for it to work. So you can click a little check mark for each picture that you would like to add to your movie. And then you would go up here to this three dots and you would click download. And then it would download all those photos and you would see them drop here in a folder. So once those photos are downloaded, I would create a folder. I'll just drag it and drop it here. And then I would probably rename the folder to whatever month that it was. So if these were August photos, I would put in August. And then in this folder right here would be all the photos that I have from August. August. So if you see here, this would be the picture and then this would be the video clip, the live photo that I could drop into the iMovie. So once you've downloaded those, you will then be able to insert them into your iMovie. As you download your photos, I basically take the photo, I drag and I drop it into iMovie, and then I edit the time length of the photo to fit the amount of time that I want it to be. Now, what I do is if there are multiple people in the picture, I make the duration of that photo stay up a little bit longer so everyone can see the different uh, components of that photo. But if it's just one individual student in that photo, I usually set it to like one second to just keep it moving quickly. Just 
just because when you're making your iMovies, they can get really long and you don't want it to be too long. You want it to be sweet and just enough time spent on each photo. So that's just a little tip that I do. Okay, so then I would open up iMovie, I would click Create New, and then I would click Movie. And after I have a new movie template, I would then open up my pictures and I would choose the movie or the image. You can decide which one you like best. And then I would just drag, you could even um, hit um, mine is the alt button and highlight multiple ones at a time and then drag all of those into your iMovie. Um, and then if you click and you see this line and you push the space bar on your keyboard, it will begin to play it for you. When I click here, it'll zoom in a little bit more so it can be helpful if you're trying to cut. When you want to make a video, video clip shorter, it's short, I just grab the end of the photo and I drag it. And then as you're dragging it, you can see how many seconds it is. So this one's one second and a 20th of a second. Um, and I might want to go to about 110 for a photo. And then it switches to the next one. And here I would just come in and pull all of them to around one second or a little bit more. Again, I explained earlier that if you have multiple students in a photo, you probably will want to make that photo stay on a little bit longer than the others. But this is the way that I would do it. And then I would come back here, click, and then push space bar to just see if this was transitioning um, in a nice way. And that looks pretty good. I also like to create different images in PowerPoint just to label the months. So as you can see here, I have August memories and I put these before each section of photos and as we transition to a new month, I'll, I'll pop in the other image just to indicate the progression of the year. Um, it's a fun little way to organize, totally optional, but I have that in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. If you would like to purchase that, I have a link in the description below. Okay, so here I was explaining that sometimes I make and design images in PowerPoint that I then convert into a PNG or a JPEG so that I can drop it in my iMovie. Now here I created all these cute little um, months memories that you can put before each month as you're going through your slides. This is available on my Teachers Pay Teachers store, but if you would like to design your own, you can come in here and design it however you want, and then you would go up to File, Export, and I'm going to export it as a PNG. You could do a JPEG, but this usually is a little bit clearer. I want to save every slide. Sometimes I only want to slave save the slide that I'm on, but in this case, I'm gonna save every slide. I like to just put it on my desktop, and I already have it um, titled up here. So I'm gonna export it, and then it will convert it into an image that I can drop in my iMovie. Okay, so I have all my images in here. I'm gonna double click, and I am going to choose whichever one that I want drop it in my iMovie and then usually when it drops in iMovie it's about four seconds long but I really like about one one and a half seconds duration of time and it is going to just indicate that that's the month that we are watching and then say here is another month transition I will come in um, and drop another photo just hovering over until it makes space Again, shortening the time to about one and a half. If you want to go the extra step and get fancy, you could add transitions between your pictures. Um, it is an extra step and a little bit time consuming. I don't find that it's really that necessary unless you want to do it like right at the beginning of each one. It might be fun to have a little transition, um, but it is kind of time consuming to go in and drag them. You would click on transitions and you could choose which one you wanted and then drag it in between each of the pictures. Um, I would maybe add one right here at the beginning um, 
but I wouldn't do it for every photo. It's just too much time and I don't think it's necessary. Now you are going to want to insert music. You're going to want to use age appropriate music. I teach kindergarten, so I pick some fun kid type songs. If you teach older grades, you're going to want to pick songs that would be more appropriate for them. I like to pick songs that are on friendship, hopeful, pursuing dreams, things like that. Um, and also that have kind of that upbeat tone um, sort of towards the beginning of the video and then kind of segue into that more sedimental type music. Um, I will post a list of different songs that I have used. It'll be in the descriptions below. You can click on that link and get some ideas. However, it's not exhaustive. There's a lot of different ideas out there too if you do a Google search for end of the year movie uh, music. After you have all of your photos inserted and you have shortened the time and duration of each photo to be exactly where you want it to be, you're going to go in and add music. So you're going to click on audio. Now all of the songs that I have are going to come up here. You should also have um, your music if you have um, your iMusic connected. I did have it on my phone and I had to figure out how to uh, sync it with my computer. That would be a different tutorial, but you do want to have um, the music on your computer somehow. You have to uh, get that. You can purchase individual songs for like 99 cents on iTunes, around 99 cents. All of these songs I did purchase for 99 cents. So I'm going to pull in the song, You've Got a Friend in Me, and I'm going to grab the song like so and just drag it underneath my picture video. And then it shows up. You can pull it to where it starts there. Um, one cool feature about the audio is that when you click on it, there's this little black dot here. And if you want the music to fade out, you can start to drag it so that when the music plays, it will fade um, at a certain point. Okay, say you have music that extends past your video. What you can do is you can go to the end of that music, and then you're going to grab and just drag it all the way over. Okay, now once you have inserted the music, I like to go back and watch the whole video and just edit the little parts that need to be tweaked as I go along. I try to give an equal amount of pictures to each student so that there's not one student who has a ton of pictures and other students who don't. Um, so I try to balance that. But once I feel like I've hit that sweet spot, I like to keep my videos about 10 minutes. Um, this year, my video went to 12 minutes because it was so hard to choose. I had so many good photos. So you don't really want to stretch it past 15. Try and make it short and sweet, get in all those beautiful photos. And once you have done that, you will export your video either onto YouTube and make it unlisted. And of course you will need to check with your school to see if that is okay with them. My school was okay with that. So I went ahead and did that. Um, also you can download the file of the video. And what I did was I dropped it into my Google Drive, which it did take a while to upload. So you want to make sure your screen will not go to sleep. It will just stay open and continue to process and download that onto the Google Drive. But once you do that, you can share the link with the parents and then they can download the video as a keepsake um, and also they can view the video. Now, after you have your video and it's perfect and you have made sure that it is what you want, you can upload to YouTube or you can download it as a file. I'm gonna download it as a file because I want to share it with my parents and then I can manually upload it to my YouTube channel. So you click File and then you're just gonna go through the settings here to save it with the right name that you want to save it under, where you want to save it, and then you're gonna click Save. 
you'll notice right here, the circle will tell you when it is finished. Now, because this is a movie video, it does take some time to download and upload. You do wanna factor in a few hours, if not more, to download some of these things. All right, so here is the file that I have created. And you can play it and make sure it is what you want. And there you have it. That's how you make your iMovie. You can upload it to YouTube or you can drop this in your Google Drive and then share it with your families through a link. So here's my Google Drive. I would take my video, drag and drop it. And as you can see, it says it's gonna take 11 hours. It really won't take that long but it will take a little bit longer to upload depending on how long your video is and how strong your Wi-Fi connection is. Once it's uploaded here, you're gonna right click, you're gonna share it, um, but you do need to change your share settings. You want to click here to change it to anyone with a link and you want them to be able to view it. And then you click copy link done and then you would take this link and upload it to your remind app or your dojo app or send an email to your parents sharing this video with them they can personally download it and keep it as a keepsake and there you have your picture memory video it turns out really nice especially if you have live photos i mean if you can picture this is children working in your classroom and playing and laughing together um, it really works out to be an incredible um, moment to share at the end of the year to really relive your whole year together now, if this video was helpful for you, consider liking and subscribing. I will be putting out some more teacher tips in the near future.